It's time for News 3's Sports Extra, sponsored by Childers Orthodontics, Weeks of West Frankfurt, Southside Lumber, and SIU Credit Union. Now, News 3's Sports Extra. It is a busy night of high school hoops. How hectic? I literally just threw the tie on, so if it doesn't look straight, don't worry about my tie because we're focused on basketball. Hey, tournament week coming to a close this weekend. Some key matchups tonight in both Rob, uh, round robin play and semifinal action. Let's start at the West Frankfort Midwinter Classic in the round robin format. Look at that. You know, they're announcing one said, the Supreme Court. It is a beautiful court. Marion taking on host Wes Frank for Wildcats showing patience on offense, working around Rajon Barlow for three. And they come out of the gate fast. Frankie Horner puts it in another gear. Getting a little friendly roll on the coast to coast layup. But Wes Frank for trying to get on the board. Andrew Cunningham, a little stumble. Stay with it, stay with it. That was difficult. Makes it look easy, right? Here they come. Here's the Redbirds. Crowd behind them. Oh, I love those high arcing shots. Yeah, make that twine dance, Isaiah Thompson. But here comes Marion right back. Jackson Connor, the bucket, the foul. Marion knocks off West Frankfort, 66-57. Now, in the first game from West Frankfort, Caro and Heron, they did battle. Heron was down 10, but they go on a bit of a run. Landon Bowen, the theft and the finish. I like that hard step to the basket. And the Tigers finished the third quarter strong. Brandon Anthony, 4-3. Hey, this was part of a Tigers 9-0 run. The Pilots stopped the bleeding. Doris Morse has got a triple of his own. That pushes the lead to four with about five and a half to play. But it's Anthony, the up and under move. We got a ball game. But it's Morse again for the Pilots. Just flexing his muscles. He ate his spinach today. Look at that. And then Terrell Jones says, give me the ball. Give me the ball. They gave him the ball. That's a three. Pushes the lead to six. Carroll holds off Heron 51-48. Afterwards, we caught up with Coach Wood on his team getting a big W. Yes, the guys fought hard, and I'm, I'm real proud of their effort. Uh, we went up a little bit, but we know Heron because we played them before. That they're a never quit team, and so we just we had to fight and play good defense. And near the end, our defense kind of prevailed for us. All right, we're moving on. Let's make our way to Metropolis for the Superman Classic semifinals from Massac County High School. Can the Patriots win their tournament, or will someone else be their kryptonite? See what I did there? Let's get you some answers. Host team taking on Carterville for a spot in the finals. And it's Bryce Anderson for Carterville. Going to drive through the open lane. The stop, pop, watch it drop. Sinks the bucket. He chipped in with six. And then the Patriots, J.J. Sweat, swinging it over to Jace Mazel. He's deadly when his feet are set. Massac up by five. And then the Lions stay in this. Eli down and hits nothing but net. He had a game high 18. Lots of players getting involved for Massac County. How about Kyler McIntosh? Oh, uh, yeah, he's clutch. Three Patriots in double figures. They would start to pull away. Julian Russell hitting the tray. He led the team with 14. Massac makes it to the finals. 62-53, they top Carterville. All right, game two, undefeated Goreville facing Charleston of Missouri. And Teridian Bogan going to drive in the paint, gets the... Up and under, Blue Jays up eight early. And then Bogan launches a pass over to Samuel Bledsoe. Oh, he muscles that way to the rim. The lead extends to 10. He had a game high 28 for him. Gorville, though, not going to let the win streak die without a fight. Briley Dunn pushes through traffic for two. And then Luke Brown dishes to the corner. Logan Hankins sinking the pretty one behind the arc. Gorville just down five. But you can't make mistakes against a good team like this. Blessing Kimball picks the pocket, sends it to Rico Coleman to finish the play, and Charleston hands Goreville their first loss of the season, 83 to 70. Wow, what a ball game. Now, Kendra Sheehan has been live from Metropolis all night. She joins us to recap tonight's games, plus she caught up with both winning coaches. So, Kendra, what do you have for us? 
Jason, I wish that our sports cast started earlier because this empty quiet gym just doesn't show how loud, how packed and how crazy this gym was just a little bit ago. I'll start with the last game of the night, Charleston versus Goreville. It was a physical game, but let me say something about Goreville's fan base. They are loud and they travel in numbers. They had an impressive show out, but it wasn't enough. Charleston was able to snap the Black Hats 20 game win streak and punch their ticket to the championship. Going back to the first semifinal game, Massac County versus Carterville. The home team was down by one in the fourth quarter, but you know, hometown home crowd is going to show out and they were able to get the W to send themselves to the finals in their home tournament. And I got a chance to talk with both head coaches following tonight's performance. At the quarter, we just talked about we've been here before. And let's just do our stuff and keep playing. And I've got seniors that's played. And we've got some juniors that's really stepped up. So we're real pleased with the win. Uh, probably going to be up late tonight looking at film. You know, this game meant a lot. You know, Agoraville, they, they were undefeated, you know, coming into this game. So uh, my kids, we wanted to play well because uh, they are a very good team. So we come to play tonight. It feels, it feels great. I plan, we plan to come in the game and snap this record. Uh, we knew that they was going to play hard, so we play hard with them. And they're a physical team. He was right. They were definitely a physical group of guys. Up next tomorrow, Charlestown versus Massac County for the championship, 7.30 tip-off. But for now, reporting in Massac County, Kendra Sheehan, News 3 Sports. Back to you, Jason. Wow, what a game that is. Unbelievable. Great job as always, Kendra. Hey, we're not done. We got plenty of basketball for you. More tournament action. Benton Invitational Tournament. A couple of teams playing there, and I sent one of our guys to get you highlights. So you don't want to see me, right? You want to see the action. So here we go. The Panthers of Pinckneyville taking on Mounds Meridian. And the Panthers, they get their offense going early on. Dawson Yates will dish it out to Dre Scott, and the junior makes a strong move inside the rim. Panthers up Eight. Later in the second, it's Yates coming off the screen. There he goes. Let it fly, knocking it down. He finished the night with 14 points. Hey, Roderick Gatewood Jr., strong night as well. The freshman spots up from the right. Art knocking down that long distance shot. Bobcats playing strong. Closing seconds of the half. It's a dagger from the Panthers. Devin Kitchen. Woohoo! Yeah, that is good. Wow! Yeah, go get him, guys. That's a heck of a shot. Pickneyville rolls past Mounds Meridian, 75-39. We ran the floor well. thought we guarded. Um, didn't let him get to the basket because they like getting the basket and layups. Uh, we get in the gaps real well. We batted good, too. All right, let's keep going. Same court, Benton and Cesar Belier. All right, in the first, though, the Red Devils gaining control. Peyton Bates. Oh, yeah, he can... Shoot that mid-runs jumper just as good as anyone. Cesar right there in this one, down by one. But closing seconds of the first, check this out. Reese Johnson, the quick touch, pass to Reed Baumgart, and he drills it. Second quarter, defense taking over Brad Hammond. Woohoo! There's a block party. Oh my goodness. Met at the rim, and in the closing seconds of the half, it's Baumgart again. Yeah, he can shoot it. From the left arc, buries it. Benton takes this one, 47-39. All right, from Johnston City, Arrowhead Classic, here we go. Anna Jonesboro and Christopher, third quarter. Collins Theta sinking the three. Christopher up, 33-21. Soon after, though, Grant Gordon. Nearly the same spot, that's good. Putting Christopher up, 42-23. Now Christopher with the defense as well, Kai Garver. Gets the steal and takes it down the court for the layup. And that's A.J. Pena's turn. All right, let's go. Fourth quarter, Christopher Bryce. Christopher's Bryce Pratt, 4-3. Wow, he's got some range. That was a long distance three. That puts them up 51-29. Now, A.J. trying to get something going late. Ethan Carver gets the loose ball, gets it to the hoop for two. 51-33, Christopher and they go on to win 54-35. All right, second game from the same location. El Dorado facing the home team, Johnston City. First quarter, El Dorado draws first blood. Parker Price making it go swoosh. 
Two nothing. El Dorado's Aiden Whitlock from three. We got a 5-3 ball game. All right, JC's turn. Braden Watts from three. Apparently, it's raining three indoors. Ah, I love that. Near the end of the first, El Dorado's Nolan Henson. Come on in. Join the party. Uh, it was that kind of night. And your final score from this one is, let's flash it up for the folks at home. Can we flash up the score? Yeah, El Dorado, 54-43 over Johnston City. Hey, I caught up with our newest band terror player of the week winner, Jaden Beers. Beers won with 58% of the votes, and it's great to see all the smaller schools embrace the band terror player of the week process. That includes Galatia. They really got behind Jaden. I was super excited because nobody from Galatia has ever been nominated and I didn't know who nominated me or anything so it was a really big deal because I had a game on Monday and I found out after the game. In English, when everybody came in, our teacher just like, all right, get on the computer, we're voting. Every class has been, every time you walk in, you're voting and everybody's like, good luck, Jaden, I voted for you. I had my whole family vote for you. So, I mean, we really came together as a community for this. All right, I got a wet us than a minute to go, so I'm going to talk super, super fast. Egyptian Midwinter Classic, Dongola 49-44 over Shawnee. Ziggler Royalton, 55-36 over Joppa. Salem Invitational Tournament, East St. Louis gets by Carbondale, 63-40. Carmi White County Invitational Tournament, Harrisburg a winner, 57-35 over Edwards County. Mark Car uh, Mount Carmel, 59-42 over Mount Vernon, Indiana. Carmi White Invitational County, uh, Carmi White County Invitational Tournament. Again, Fairfield, 77-43 over Carmi White County. And let me breathe. That's all the time we have, folks. So be sure to tune in tomorrow as we've got more sports for you. That's going to do it. Have a good night.